Hello and welcome to this edition of Back in History. In Back in History, we take you through the uncountable pages of our historical past. In this edition, we bring to you the speech that landed MK Abiola in trouble with the military. From this speech, Abiola lost his freedom of movement and freedom of expression and later lost his life. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. The military had been in power in Nigeria for so many years. Despite the usual promises to hand over power to elected civilian administrators, Nigerians became tired of military rule and demanded for an end to military rule and dictatorship. In 1992, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, the then military head of state, began the process that was to lead to the handover of power from the military to civilians. The electoral body was set up with Professor Humphrey Ngozo as the chairman. Political parties were registered and allowed to prepare candidates for the general election. Governors were elected, senators were elected, members of the House of Assembly and of the House of Representatives were also elected. What then remained was the presidential election. Eventually, the presidential election held in 1993 with Alaji Tofa as candidate of the NRC and MK Abiola as candidate of the SDP. Option A4 was used and at the end of voting, MK Abiola had more votes than Tofa and was the presumptive winner of the election but before he could be announced as the winner, the military annulled the election. Abiola then began a struggle for the actualization of what he considered to be his rightful mandate. Several meetings were held to no avail. Protests were made across the country to no avail still. In the midst of all these, General Babangida appointed Enes Shenekon to serve as interim president of Nigeria. Following the appointment of Shenekon, Babangida stepped aside from office. Abiola's election did not even enjoy any further mention by the military. His election was at most a forgotten matter, at least for the military. But Abiola most of his supporters did not relent. They forged on and took the battle even to the international level. In the midst of these, General Sane Abacha removed Enna Shenekon in a military coup and made himself the new military head of state. With this development, the situation became more dicey and Abiola's hope of becoming the president of Nigeria was getting really slim following the emergence of yet another military ruler. Abiola's life came under serious military surveillance and Abiola's next option was for him to flee the country and settle in exile. Even in exile, Abiola did not relent his effort, neither did he abandon his struggle for the presidency of Nigeria. Abiola later returned to Nigeria in what can be described as an audacious move to claim the presidency of Nigeria in actualization of his election mandate. He called for a world press conference in Ekbetedo in Lagos State, Nigeria on June 12, 1994 and announced himself as the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces and called on Abacha's military government to immediately vacate the presidency and allow the will of the people to prevail. He promised to retire them with full military benefits. He described the military as, quote, politicians in uniform. He also called them thieves and also called them armed robbers who robbed the people of Nigeria in broad daylight. General Abacha, described by many as the real dictator of Nigeria, did not find this funny. He immediately ordered for the arrest of Abiola and had him detained in custody on charges of treason. Here are the highlights of Abiola's speech. People of Nigeria, exactly one year ago, you turned out in your millions to vote for me, MKO Abiola, as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But politicians in uniform who call themselves soldiers but are more devious than any civilian would want to be, deprived you of your God-given right to be ruled by the president you had yourselves elected. 
These soldier politicians introduce into our body polity a concept hitherto unknown to our political lexicography, something strangely called the annulment of an election perceived by all to have been the fairest, cleanest, and most peaceful ever held in our nation. Since that abominable act of naked political armed robbery occurred, I have been constantly urged by people of goodwill both in Nigeria and abroad to put the matter back into the people's hands and get them to actualize the mandates they gave me at the polls. But mindful of the need to ensure that peace continues to reign in our fragile federation, I have so far tried to pursue sweet reason and negotiation." Unquote. Abiola went on to say, unquote, My hope has always been to arouse whatever remnant of patriotism are left in the hearts of these thieves of your mandate, and to persuade them that they should not allow their personal desire to rule to usher our beloved country into an era of political instability and economic ruin. However, although this peaceful approach has exposed me to severe censor by some who have mistaken it for weakness on my part, those with whom I have sought to dialogue have remained like stones, neither stirred to show loyalty to the collective decision of the people of their own country, nor to observe Allah's injunction that they should exhibit justice and fair play in all their dealings with their fellow men." Unquote. He went on to say, unquote, appeals to their honor as officers and gentlemen of the gallant Nigerian armed forces have fallen on deaf ears. Instead, they have resorted to the tactics of divide and rule, bribery and political perfidy, misinformation and vile propaganda. They arrest everyone who disagrees with them. How much can we tolerate all this? People of Nigeria, you are all witnesses that I have tried to climb the highest mountain, cross the deepest river, and walk the longest mile in order to get these men to obey the will of our people. Today, people of Nigeria, I join you all in saying, enough is enough. We have endured 24 years of military rule in our 34 years of independence. Enough of military rule. We are sickened to see people who have shown little or no personal achievement, either in building or private businesses or making success of any tangible thing, being placed in charge of the management of our nation's economy by rulers who are not accountable to anyone. Enough of square pegs in round holes. We are tired of the military's repetitive tendency to experiment with our economy. As of now, from this moment, a new government of national unity is in power throughout the length and breadth of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, led by me, Basharum MKO Abiola, as President and Commander-in-Chief. The National Assembly is hereby reconvened. All dismissed governors are reinstated. The state assemblies are reconstituted, as well as local government councils. I call upon the usurper, General Sane Abacha, to announce his resignation forthwith, together with the rest of his illegal ruling council. We are prepared to enter into negotiations with them to work out the mechanics for the smooth transfer of power. I pledge that if they hand over quietly, they will be retired with all their entitlement and their positions will be accorded all the respect due to them. He went on to say, unquote, I hereby invoke the mandate bestowed upon me by my victory in the said election to call on all members of the armed forces and the police, the civil and public services throughout the Federation of Nigeria to obey only the government of my national unity that is headed by me, your own elected president. My government of national unity is the only legitimate constituted authority in the Federal Republic of Nigeria as of now. People of Nigeria, our time is now. You are the repository of power in the land. No one can give you power. It is yours. Take it. God bless you all. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live 
the Government of National Unity, MKO Abiola, Ekbatedo, Lagos State, Nigeria. End of quote. General Sani Abacha literally went mad at Abiola over the words employed in his speech and the audacity to return to Nigeria from exile and make such a speech in the lifetime of a military administration. Abacha ordered for his arrest and detention. He was immediately arrested and detained in solitary confinement for four years with only a Bible and a Quran as his companions. It is reported that he was guarded on a daily basis by not less than 14 soldiers at a time. Several calls were made for his release including the visit to Nigeria by Pope John Paul II, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and other world leaders, all to no avail. Bacha kept him in custody for good four years. It was indeed frustrating for Abiola, who neither actualized his dream of becoming Nigeria's president nor regained his freedom for an unbroken period of four years. Abiola later died in the said custody under very controversial circumstances. Some analysts have said that Abiola's approach was not the best approach in the face of a full-blown military dictatorship. That even in his prepared speech, the words used in describing the military were words that were surely going to pitch the military against him seriously. Others have said that he unwittingly played himself into the hands of the military who were always looking for words to use in arresting him. Others have also said that the situation at the time called for the making of Abiola's kind of speech. Whatever may be the best analysis of the situation, what remains indisputable is the fact that, following the making of this very speech, Mko Abiola lost his freedom and later paid the supreme price with his life. Many thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel and follow the channel for regular notifications. <music>